This is the first part, just the five numbers and neons. This is the moral life. This is the, this, here are the rules, okay? Here are the rules. Rules of life. The, the handbook. The, the owner's manual. The owner's manual to a good life is by following these rules. Ahimsa, uh, Satya, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Aparag, Aparigraha, Yama. These are the Yamas. Yamas means um, precepts. These are the thou shalt. You should do these things. Is that right? No, thou shalt not. <laughs> thou shalt not. These are the, these are the, the, the forms of, they, they translate here self-control. These are the self -control. The beginning of a moral life is learning how to restrain yourself from your own impulses. That's the beginning of a moral life. We, we, we cannot trust our instincts. Our instincts are wired wrong. What we call instincts are wired wrong. And they're not hardwired. So you know, in a way you can't really call them instincts. They're, they're not by nature. I guess you could say an instinct is something that we have by nature. There are no such things like that. They're, they are instincts in the sense of habits. We've just habituated ourselves to, to doing the wrong thing, to respond in the wrong way. And we can't trust our, our instincts. I gave you an example of it yesterday. What if I leaped up and smacked you upside the head? What's your instinct? See? What if I, what if I ran a, a plane into your building? What was your instinct? See? Absolutely wrong. Abso not just a little wrong, 180 degrees wrong. If, you, if your instinct tells you you should hit back when someone hits you, it's not just a little wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Completely wrong. How did you get someone who hit you in the first place? By hitting. How did you get somebody who run, runs, building, runs planes into your buildings in the first place? By destroying their buildings, you see? It, everything is caused like that. Everything is in the, in the realm of causality like that. And our instincts are programmed completely wrong. So the, the ethical life begins with learning how to restrain our instincts. So the first one is the first one in the laundry list here, okay? Number one with a bullet. Right? Ahimsa. Stop harming others. Ahimsa means no harm. No harm to others. Physically, verbally, or even mentally, okay? But at least start physically. Don't harm others means no killing, for example. So I, I haven't committed any mass murders lately. I guess I'm, I'm off the hook there. So, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not that easy, okay? First of all, okay, I'll, I'll give you a very, very uh, kind of uh, disturbing uh, example. If you, if you support other people's killing, you collect the karma of killing. If you support it in any way, so if you, if you support it by, like, for, for example, paying taxes without putting a note at least in, in there somewhere, going, I object to the fact that ma major parts of my tax money is going to war. So you collect the karma of a war. If you support it in any way, you collect the same karma. Because they are acting, they are your agent. They are your agents. The soldiers in Iraq are your, are your agents. The soldiers in Afghanistan are your representatives. You see, unless you object to it, at least mentally. See, if not in some other way, you got that problem. So it's not like we're off the hook here, easy, when it comes to ahimsa. I had a, I had a very nice uh, yoga student uh, who came to my classes in Los Angeles. She was, she was a yoga teacher, actually, and uh, taught out of her house. Uh, she had a very, very nice house. She had a uh, million dollar house in, uh, in LA, multi million dollar. And, uh, and she came to me at the end of a, of a talk and was talking about Ahimsa and among other things. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm done with that Ahimsa thing. I'm really, you know, I'm done. I, I, I believe that. You, know, you shouldn't harm other beings. And, I, you know, I could hear the but in her voice. But, you know, I have a million dollar home. And it's got termites. So, you, you know, it, you know, like we, we nudge that. So, you know. I said, no, what? So well, you know, I, I, I have to tent. I have to tent the house, you know, tenting. When they put the tent up, and, and then you have your own private little Auschwitz <laughs> for the termites. And you gas them. And thousands of thousands of living beings die. And it's like, so you know, it's a million dollar house, so I have to, I have to you know, get rid of the termites. 
So like, you know, like, so I don't know what she wanted from me. And, you know, I guess she wanted me to do like the priests did in the Middle Ages, as they like, sent the you know knights off to kill you know Muslims and the you know to like give them blessing. Oh, you go thou in peace and smite the enemy. You know, <laughs> killeth thy 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 termites or something. I can't do that. Nobody can do that. Your consciousness registers the fact that at your hand or at your phone call, you know, thousands of beings are dead, dying. See that that. Mr. Carmen didn't just go to sleep. Mr. Carmen never goes to sleep. You is Mr. Carmen or Ms. Carmen. All you need to collect karma is conscious to be conscious. The karma can is always on. <laughs> you look karma can consciousness, and 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 if you if you notice that because of your actions, thousands of beings, no matter how small they are, those are just little. Well, it doesn't matter that the big beings do. How how little do they get before you can start killing them? You see, well, I can't kill cats. You see, I, uh, you know, and I don't eat, I don't eat hamburgers because they're they're really big. Those cows are really big. You know, like cats. I eat. But how far, how small do they got get to be? You know, have to be before you can start to start killing them. You ever see? You ever read that children's book, um, Horton Hears a Who, by Dr. Seuss? A person's a person, no matter how small. Okay. <laughs> so I think so. It's not. Sorry. Let, let me keep going. Okay, you can ask that at the end. Okay. Uh, so you know. Ahimsa is, um, ahimsa is very, very hard to do, actually. To, this, uh, the, you know, the, to keep a, to live a life of harmlessness is very, very difficult. I would suggest to you it's impossible, actually. It's impossible to live without killing. How many beings died, you know, as you drove your car over here, you see? And, you know, being a vegetarian isn't going to get you off the hook. Being a vegan isn't going to get you off the hook. I mean, it's probably better to be a vegetarian than not, actually. You know, we don't have any excuse for not being really a vegetarian. It's not like we can't find protein, you know, in other in other food sources. Uh, you know, tofu, they can make tofu taste like anything, right? So you know how to make tofu taste like a cheeseburger. No problem. You know, we, we went to a, is it, is it, oh, it's in Sacramento. Sacramento. There's a restaurant in Sacramento. Maybe you should go sometime. They make tofu into shrimp. <laughs> I mean, it even looks like shrimp. I don't know how they get those little veins like shrimp has in them. But it's all tofu. You can make tofu in anything. So there's no real excuse to it. But just being a vegetarian isn't going to solve your problem. How many beings have to die for your bowl of rice? You see, as they're harvesting you know, vegetables and stuff, little tiny beings are dying all the time. So it's not actually possible to live without killing. But at least have the intention, you see. At least have the intention. I don't, I don't want to kill. I don't want to harm them. You know, I, I, I'm sorry that I'm living in a, in a realm like this, a broken realm like this, where I can't actually live without them. I really wish that weren't the case. But at least have that attention. Second one is satya. Satya means tell the truth. Heard that before? Word up. Don't lie. Thou shalt not lie. Heard, heard that before anywhere? Like I was saying last night, just olds, right? Just olds. Nothing new here. Just olds. And in the yoga text, just like in, in every other ethical system, there's some version of tell, don't tell people lies. And it's, not, and it's not because somebody up in the sky is going to be mad at you. It's because you don't want people to lie to you. See? Nobody wants to be deceived. Nobody wants to you know, have people, people lying to them. So why are you lying to other people? See? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and do not do unto others. You know, the negative version of the golden rule. Do not do unto others as you would, would not have them do unto you. You don't want people lying to them. Why are you lying? So then sometimes people like get to say, you know, they have the question, well, I'm a really compassionate person. I'm a really nice person. And um, what about a what about when somebody comes up to me and says, Do you like my new po purple polka dot dress that I got at Kmart for $3.95? Made out of out of you know non-natural fibers. How, how, do you, how do you like my dress? I said, I'm such a nice person that I have to lie to them. Because I don't want to hurt their feelings by telling the truth about their dress. Here's another really, really good example of like maybe you need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so when somebody, somebody says it, and your brain freezes up and you can't think of anything nice to say about the dress, that, that isn't, so, instead of lying, go to the bathroom, so lock yourself in the stall for me, say, excuse me, go to the bathroom and think about the dress for a minute. And go into the bathroom and think, can't you say anything nice about the dress? Can't you figure out, what about the purple? Didn't that nice color, isn't that a nice color, those, you know, the, the, the shade of those polka dots? 
See, how about what a good deal she got on interest? Would you say, like, oh, you never, you, you saved a lot of money on interest. You made five. Imagine. You must have a lot of money left over to buy other things. Can't you say anything nice except for your dress sucks? <laughs> Which is not a, I agree, is not a compassionate act. See, so you, you can always find something true to say that isn't harmful, actually. And then, you know, once every like three or four lifetimes. <laughs> when, so, so sometimes they get these like hypothetical questions. Like, you know, that happened maybe once every three or four lifetimes. What if a refugee is being chased by Gestapo, Jack Putin Gestapo uh, police, who are going to take them and torture them and kill them, and they come and, 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 and to my door and say, please shelter me from the Gestapo police. And you say, yes, of course, come in. And then the Gestapo police knock on the door and say, is there a refugee in the house? Can you lie then? Could I lie then? I said, yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. By all means. See, lie. And know that it is a lie and that you will suffer for it. But out of compassion for the person who, who is in your house, you're willing to take the hit. See, again, Mr. Karma, the Karma camp didn't go off then either. See, they like shut down and said, okay, go ahead and lie, and I'll, 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 I'll tune back in later. But out of compassion for this, be willing to take the hit. So I say, yes, I'm going to lie. And I, and I know that I will suffer for this in the future, but I'm willing to do that for this person. And if, and if you do that with a full belief that that actually is the case, guess what? Probably won't have to suffer for it. But you can't, like, you know, kind of say, yeah, I, you can't cross my heart. <laughs> Right? You, 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 you gotta be fully willing 